If you're still using Google to do all your searches, you're wasting your time. Perplexity is here and it's taking over the world and it's time to change. Let's go and have a look why. If you've never used Perplexity before, I'm going to give you a quick rundown on why it's so amazing and show you some comparisons with Google and why Google sucks. <laughs> and why you need to change to Perplexity to do most of your searches and research and basic how-tos and all that kind of stuff. So let's take a few quick examples just to show you how easy it is and how amazing it is. For example, if you want to know how to fold an ironing board, as ridiculous as that is. So as you can see, Perplexity comes up with not only a step-by-step -step answer on how to do this particular task, but it also comes up with references and videos and all sorts of things to go with it so that you can dive even deeper into the topic and really figure out how to do things. Now, if we compare that to Google, you just get the video at the top, and yeah, you get the references or you get the websites, but you need to scroll through and find what you're looking for. Now, of course, this is not the worst example in the world, and they do a very similar job. But if you want to dive into something a little bit more interesting, we'll do a new thread here, which is basically a new question. And you can ask something as simple as, create me an itinerary for my seven-day trip to Norway. And so it'll go and look at a whole bunch of top ranking websites and compile that all together. And in the background, it's using ChatGPT. You can also reconfigure it to use some of the other AI models, but it basically lays out a simple itinerary that most people would be taking to make the most of their trip to Norway. And on top of that, at the top here, it gives you the references. And you can jump in for even more details and it shows you with the numbers here where it's been getting this information from so you can have a look at it and then at the bottom here you can dive into all the topics in even more detail and you can even do follow-up questions to reconfigure your answers or find more information or you can ask it to rewrite what it's been doing you can copy it you can reconfigure it it's absolutely awesome for this kind of stuff. Now, if you compare that to Google, and actually let's just copy and paste this to make it a little bit faster. So yeah, it's basically taken an excerpt from one of the blogs, which is okay, but that's all it's doing for us. And for the rest, it's got a lot of a similar websites as a result but you're going to have to dive in and pick that all apart yourself so if we go one step further and say maybe we want to add something in and we say this is okay but please add in three days in the Lofoten which is an awesome place in Norway So now it's given you a reference to the Lofoten, so you can add that in. And it's changed a little bit of your itinerary to include the Lofoten, which makes kind of sense. You go to Bergen first, and then you go up to the Lofoten because it's quite a distance. Then you come back to Oslo to leave on your way home. And then you can ask it all sorts of questions and dive even further into it. It's got maps here and videos and pictures on the right-hand side. And you can save a lot of this stuff into what they call collections. So if you're doing the research on your upcoming trip, you can put this stuff into the collections at the top there and use that to start doing all your research, which is really cool. And you can look for videos here and it'll start the search on videos and you can even create images, of course, which is not relevant here. But as you can see, this is far more detailed and far more interesting when you're looking for specific information. You can also do other really cool stuff, for example, like uh, give me the latest information on the upcoming US election. If you're watching this after November, that's irrelevant. 
but it's going to give you a whole bunch of up to the minute information because it's connecting to the web and it's pulling all of this kind of information with sources and telling you all of the most interesting things that are happening and related searches. And if we look at Google, latest information on the US election. Sure, it has the information, but you're going to have to plow through all of this to get all of the information to figure out what's going on. And if you compare that to what it's saying here, it's given you the state of the race, how close the race is, the battleground states, the strategies, the key issues, what the voters are up to, what's coming up that's so important. And then you can say things like, show me the latest polling data. So you can see who's winning. So this is all the different polls and what they're saying about all the different candidates, a very, very close election, obviously, and what's happening in the most contended states that are going to make the biggest difference in the election. And then you can click on any of these sources and go and read these blog posts, which are in Google, but here you're being given them in context with the most interesting information. And it's a lot more easier to do research and to collate stuff and to find stuff and to get answers to stuff. Now, let's take a, another interesting one I was looking at earlier. For example, I've been having a lot of trouble with my Chrome browser and it's always crashing on me. And I believe it's plugins that are causing the problem. But let's start off here and say, why is my Chrome, Chrome browser? crashing. So yeah, there's some information from Google themselves, which is great, how to fix Chrome crashes. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to have to dive into all of this stuff and pick through one by one to try to figure out what's causing the crash, which of course, perplexity probably won't jump into my computer and solve it for me. But look at this. Here's a summary of all the most common causes and what I need to do about it, along with all those references right next to the particular problem. So this is so much simpler. It saved you so much time. And similar to ChatGPT, if you've used things like ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini, you can throw questions in and have a chat to this particular tool and get a lot of information. Um, and as you can see on the right hand side, they're coming up with a desktop version, which will be even more awesome. So yeah, I mean, this is saving you tons of information. And on top of something like ChatGPT, it's giving you the references. So with ChatGPT, you're like, okay, that's an answer. Do I believe it? Do I not believe it? Is it hallucinating? Which is what they call it when these things... <laughs> And as sort of saying things they shouldn't be saying or making stuff up, which they still tend to do, it's getting better. But here you have the references directly next to the answer. So if you don't believe something or you want to investigate something further and make sure for yourself, you can click on that and open that up. And that's taken you straight to the source, which is great. I definitely recommend you guys take a look at this and stop using Google and stop wasting your time plowing through dozens of search pages to find the answer to your questions or to do deep research or to do research for work or for school or for upcoming content for your business or whatever it is you're doing. This is the best way and the most reliable way to use AI to do research today.